part two of NES Reproductions. This is all about making the labels. This is the part that held me up for quite a while before I really got into it. And by the time I got into it, the scene was too flooded with other people doing it and I just really never pursued it too much. So let's get right into it. Okay, let's talk about making labels. Um, if I'm honest, this was the hardest part for me and it kept me from doing rep reproductions for at least a couple of years. I could have been doing this back in 2009 or 10 if I just could have figured out how to make the labels. And um, what you see here is basically what I use now. Um, you got uh, photo paper which is sticky backed, um, adhesive backed, um, probably other names for it. I think adhesive backed photo paper is what I search for or what I did search for on eBay and found this stuff. Um, I've got a front half of a cartridge shell that has been completely cleaned of any uh, adhesive, the factory adhesive. And this is how I laminate them. I just found some Duck Brand HD clear tape and I bought a package of this stuff. It was fairly expensive if I remember, but there was like six rolls or something in it. And it, it, I think this is my the second time I'm on this roll, and I don't do a lot of reproductions, but it took quite a bit of while to get through this, and it is three inch tape, which is important because you need most tape is like, you know, two or something like that, and it just does not get the width of a label, okay. And then this was another big step. Um, a lot of people just take scissors and will cut the corners, you know, just to get the fit in these round spots in the cartridge. But then I found these on eBay. I don't remember. I may have ran into somebody that recommended them. Uh, let's see. It says Crocodile Corner Chomper. I think that's actually the name brand Crocodile. I'm not real sure. I'd have to look it up now. It doesn't even say what it... There was like a radius on it. I think it'll do two different radiuses. Right down here is where you stick your label. And I've got a red mark on it because this is the side I use. It's a smaller radius. Get a better, sharper, or a, a smaller diameter corner on there. And it makes it look more original. But that saves a lot of time and makes it look more professional although I will say it, it still is not perfect every time it really depends on how well you get your 90 degree cut on your label and honestly I do it by hand with scissors still um, I'll print them off I'll let them dry I'll throw the laminate tape over the top of them and then I'll cut them out as close as I can to the image and then I'll use these on it and then I'll actually take the label and put it on here without taking the backing off and then I'll uh, fold it down and then I'll actually put it in a clamp and I'll show you what I do there because to me that's a pretty important step uh, one of the biggest problems with labels is they want to peel up off of this edge right here you know they'll just they'll come off like that a little bit I had a lot of problems with that in the beginning too and then I finally figured out how to get around it so, um, oh, and I guess the, the, the big important step here is finding labels to print off, finding the artwork. Um, I got fairly proficient at Photoshop, and I could take artwork um, found on Google or something and manipulate it to where it was a little bit different than everybody else, you know, whatever. And you know, like I put on this black background and added the text and all that stuff. It's not easy, I will say that. Um, but you shouldn't have too hard of a time finding somebody else that'll provide a label um, or just has, you know, shared it on some forum thread. I see a lot of them on Nintendo Age. Um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, Definitely the hardest part about reproductions, in my opinion, is trying to get this right. Oh, and if you want to go a step further, there's um, people that will make boxes and manuals. 
and they're really good. Uh, Uncle Test comes to mind. He's on. He sells a lot of them on eBay. They sell. Uh, yeah, and you don't even have to print labels if you don't. You can stick, skip this step entirely and just buy the label ready to go on the cart off eBay. You know, and I uh, I was trying to explore that step, but um, to be honest, the whole reproduction scene is gone bye bye. There's way too much competition. Everybody's trying to outsell each other or undersell each other, so. It's really hard to make money on reproductions anymore, in my opinion. Now, there's certain ones, if you find the right one, you can still make money on it, but I, I honestly just kind of gave up on the whole scene. Okay, so back when I got started, I actually bought this photo paper, adhesive backed photo paper. Uh, it is A6 size. It is perfect for getting two labels on, okay? The problem is this is shit paper, okay? I mean, I still got close to the full 50 sheets left of this stuff just because it's crap. And, you know, I use a cheap inkjet printer. Maybe upgrading to a laser printer would solve a lot of my bleeding problems and soaking problems. But I ended up finding this stuff, which is... Uh, you know, I don't remember what size it is. I don't think it's regular letter size. I think it's a little bit longer or something. I can't remember. But I don't get any bleed through problem problems with this stuff, and it seems to stay darker. I don't know. The blacks might be fading a little bit on here. It's kind of hard to tell. And these, I think, I actually have to still have to double print these, and that is that's a killer right there. Um, mostly because of the blacks fade especially with this stuff they would fade the black would fade to brown within a few hours or maybe even just a few minutes of printing but if I double printed it it stayed blacker longer and you know I could throw the laminate tape over it and it would stay nice for quite a while but it's still I mean even in the long run it's still an issue of that black fading just because of maybe the quality of the ink even it may not be the printer it may be, it's be you know I'm using some cheap um, refill stuff that I got off eBay for my printer you know and it still does a really good job it's just the black seems to fade and I don't know it could be a combination of ink and paper and printer who knows but it, it's one of my it's one of the biggest problems that I faced early on was just print quality hey, this is my uh, shitty $60 Epson stylus NX4 Four one five. Um, it, it is a scanner slash inkjet printer, and I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these cheap Chinese pieces of paper. And always run that thing over to hold them in place better, and that seems to help with double printing when I have to do that. And probably gonna have to do it this time too. Okay, so that's fresh out of the printer. And let's sit there for a few minutes and dry. Sometimes I'll actually hold it in like that position so that when it does dry it, it's more flat. That way when I put it back in the printer I'm not worried about it being off this way because of how it's arcing like that. Let me find something black to put next to it. Unfortunately on video you can't quite see it as brown as I do in real life, but it's already started to fade fade quite a bit, you know, just compared to this black cart. There you go, that helps a little bit. <laughs> if I shade a little bit, that's exactly how it looks in real life. It's a lot more brown than the black cart. It's crazy. Okay, here's a double print. See if I can get that light how I had it before. Yeah, it is extremely black, and I was lucky that it printed perfectly. You'll see everything be way out of line on a double print if it if it didn't get fed in there properly again. And I have full confidence that that will stay very nice and black for a while. Although I have more confidence if I use the other paper that I showed you. So I'm going to do one of those as well. 
And here's the first print on the other paper. And you can already kind of see a big difference between the blacks. Even through the camera, I shut off that main overhead light that I have. If I turn in on it, it doesn't really help the situation. I mean, I can see it plain as day. There you go. It's weird how I do that. <laughs> Changes the black. But um, this is already showing quite a bit of fade compared to the double print one. So I'm gonna go ahead and let I'm gonna let this sit for a few minutes and then double print it as well. Okay, on the right is the uh, the big A4. A4 is what I'm trying to tell you earlier. That's the size of that paper. This is the A4 with the uh, eight labels printed on it, and this is the Chinese paper with the two. And you can already see a difference in the black there. Like the Chinese one is already fading, and it looks pretty bad in real life, whereas this still looks perfectly black. So I'll let these sit for a while again and see if, if the uh, the A4 paper fades too. Okay, these have been sitting here for probably two hours now. And you can see the difference big time. This is exactly why I quit using this paper. And I've tried uh, putting the tape over it right away. Doesn't matter. Trust me. It still fades and looks like shit. These are going in the trash. Seriously, I'm just going to stick with these. These still look nice and black, and they will continue to look nice and black for quite a while. Okay, so next step is to put the tape on. And to make that easy, I'll cut them down like this. So that I can just lay tape on one at a time. Now, the trick with this tape is, is to try to peel it off without making it stick. I'm not sure if that comes out on camera. But you'll see lines in the tape where it's stuck and unstuck. You can kind of see it right there. And if you just smoothly peel that off, you won't get them. So what I've been doing is lining up in the, on the edge of the table and sticking my tape to the table and then doing my best to unroll it. Nice and smooth. I'm gonna move that back down because I do have a line that formed. And then I was just taking, taking something round and starting at the bottom, pushing it on. That will help not form air bubbles. And then I always double over the ends. That way when the tape lays down, it doesn't stick all the way in there and it's a pain in the ass to get back off. Let's see. And then I have just a paper towel. Sometimes it's got some WD-40 on it. And I'll go back over and I'll rub down the area of the label to get all the bubbles out. And I can already see this one. Yep, they rubbed out. Sometimes you get a piece of dust or something in there. And it'll look like it's a giant bubble or something. Just scrape over with your finger or something and it'll kind of go away. It also helps with the table underneath is nice and nice and flat. Beautiful. Okay. I'll do the rest of these real quick off camera. Now it just simply comes down to cutting them out. I do I'll try to get my light situated just so I can see down to the ink and where the scissor meets it. Try not to cut off too much label. I have it set for just the right amount of pixels.
And yes, I did look into a straight edge cutting device. I never found anything that I just thought would work spectacularly, but I am open to suggestions if you know something better. But also, you know, I don't really do this all day every day. If I did, I probably would get something. Okay, now for the corner cutter. Stick it down in there and make sure it's in there correctly, best you can. And you can tell, really this is about the only one that actually cut very well. It's hard to get that one in the light. And the rest are kind of just off a little bit. I mean, that one don't even look like it hit anywhere close to correct. Let's see if I can get a better camera angle for you. Okay, this one up here is the one I said looks best. That one's not too bad. That one's way off, you can tell. And that one's just as worse. But, you know, for a $30, $40 reproduction, that's okay. Okay, the next step, and this is uh, one of the steps I came up with that I've never read about or seen, and it's kind of a secret, and that is to pre-fold this thing and then clamp it down, get it on there fairly straight, get that edge bent over, and then I take it down and I bend it all the way over. put a crease on it and then I'll actually clamp it down. Now this is just um, like, like a clipboard thing and I had actually back in the day riveted it to a piece of aluminum and I made my own chip bag clip except this thing is much stronger than a normal piece of shit, shit plastic one you can get at the grocery store and then I just have a couple uh, like Dave and Buster's just credit cards smash there and you can see all these labels they've been in there a while and that and they are like permanently folded on there and they're not going to come apart see like that so that way when I put it onto the new cart that edge right there is you know it's learned to stay down like that and it won't never peel up especially on the uh, you know, after blasting the labels off, I, I usually leave all that uh, old adhesive on there, and there's usually some just left up there too, as well as whatever's on the label. So it's like good to go. I had a lot of problems with that in the beginning, and that's how I got around it. So here's the eight labels I just printed. You can see I've got the chip bag I'm trying to crush it right, right close to that folded edge. And the credit cards are the, only there to protect the label. They're not there for any other reason, really. Not for, not really. They're not strong enough to be for rigidity reasons or anything like that. So I'll leave that at least overnight before I try to attempt to put that on to a repro cart. Okay, so we tested it, started up. So let's get a label on. Of course, here's the uh, cases from a previously blasted off label as I showed in the pressure washing part and here's one of the labels that I made and you can see it's already bent right here it's probably been in the clamp for quite a while so it's going to be real easy to stick on and not try to come back up off of the edge and I just I guess I've done it so much so I just kind of put this one edge back here kind of just line it up by eye and I think it's uh, 
nice and straight. Just start laying it down. Pull that top flat back. Press it down. Push it over. There you go. I'm going to wipe off my fingerprints off of that, but. It's as easy as sticking in the PCB and getting three screws in it. Now I save all of my screws from the donor carts and I separate them. I don't know if you can see that or not. This is a security bit type. And then there's a lot of them that just are just a, a regular flathead type. And I save those uh, for like Zelda Outlands and stuff where there's a battery inside where you actually need to open it up and change the battery, you know, in five or ten years. It'd be a lot easier if you had if, if you had a flathead screw because the security bit's a little harder to get, get the hold of than just a a small flathead screwdriver and as usual I loosen the screw with pressure on it until I feel it click or move and that way I know I'm lined up on the threads and I can screw it down without much resistance and I'm not uh, gonna start new threads or I'm a lot less likely to strip it out there you go done deal Last few thoughts about doing labels. Uh, the power washer. I think mine is a 1800 psi Karcher, whatever it is, the Walmart crap electric type. Um, probably want to get 1500 psi or more to do this. And you want the nozzle that's like a pencil stream and it sprays in a cone. Very, very powerful. It just rips those labels right off. Um, also, about artwork. Um, you definitely will receive a lot of hate and flack if you try to sell a repro with an exact duplicate of an original label like stadium events uh, if you try to sell stadium events reproduction with an exact duplicate of the label you will be frowned upon by many 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 people in the video game uh, community uh, lastly if you can skip all this and just simply get on ebay and look for a label uh, one of the guys that I almost got into business with was Uncle Tusk. He does labels, manuals, boxes, maps, all kinds of, I think even the styrofoam, all that stuff that you need to make it a complete game if you want to. And pretty reasonable prices really up too, you know. So, yeah, I think that's uh, going to wrap it up for labels. Um, if I ever do any more of these videos, it'll probably be about uh, how to uh, rewire some of the more complex mapper games uh, for instance Zelda Outlands or whatever and uh, I've got some of my own tips and tricks for that stuff so if you really want to see it let me know and I'll start doing some